Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to show you guys the amazing variety of plants that can be found in just a small area. Right now we're looking at a raspberry, and I can tell this just mainly because it has this kind of like white, almost powdery coating along the stem. It's got its distinct, it has its distinct set of three leaves with teeth on the edge of the margins or on the edge of the leaf. And of course, as it, just like any other bramble or raspberry or blackberry, it has thorns. Now in the middle of the summer, this is one of the very popular berry shrubs or berry vines that a lot of people actually go for for food. They actually forage these for food because they're so damn delicious. And a lot of people who are foraging these oftentimes don't usually know about a lot of the other plants that are in the same area that you might find these. So that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Of course there's dandelion here. There's a lot of broadleaf plantain. We have a variety of wild lettuce which is getting ready to flower as you can see here. It's got these little flower buds starting. And you can tell it's a variety of wild lettuce because of this leaf. This leaf, wild lettuce's leaves are very distinct and another way that you can tell, another way that you can tell is the milky sap whenever you pluck off one of the leaves. I always like to pluck off one of the small leaves so I'm not causing very much damage. And that's one of the best ways that I like to do a test. Now this milky sap is actually bitter and toxic if you eat it in large quantities or consume it in large quantities mainly because it contains opiates which needs to be cooked out. Yeah, this is called lettuce, but it has to be cooked, it boiled in two changes of water before you can actually eat it. You cannot eat it raw. However, this plant has a much better use medicinally, and that's as a calmative or a nerve calmative or a sedative, and that's because of those opiates that it contains. Also, you can choose to go the length and do yourself a lot of harm with this plant if you use it too much over too long a period of time. So be careful with that but it is a medicinal plant right in the vicinity. As a matter of fact, there's the raspberry plant that we were just looking at right here. Those dandelions and plantain are right there. You can see another big tall wild lettuce plant growing up right there. There's also blackberries here. So there's raspberries, blackberries, dandelion, plantain, wild lettuce, all of that just right there in that small area. Then if we turn around, we find Dacus carota, or Queen Anne's Lace, also known as Wild Carrot. This is an edible plant as well, just literally two steps away behind us. Underneath that, we have quite a bit of red clover. There's also a lot of white clover in the area as well, because it's a kind of a grassy area in between two tree lines. Here you can see the leaves of the white clover, and there you can see the flowers of the white clover. And again, those are edible as well. So between all of the plants that I just showed you in this very, very small area, you have medicine and you have food throughout various times of the year. Queen Anne's Lace you can use in the spring, you can also use it in the fall. You can use it medicinally, I'm not sure of its medicinal uses. Raspberries medicinal in the spring, edible in the summer. Blackberries medicinal in the spring and edible in the summer. Dandelion is usable all year round. Plantain is usable as long as you can find leaves that aren't too stringy for food. Dandelion and plantain are both usable for medicine. Wild lettuce is edible during the spring and medicinal throughout the rest of the year, so that's great. The clovers are edible and medicinal as well. So there's a lot more food here than just raspberries and blackberries. So whenever you go foraging for raspberries or blackberries, make sure to stop and take a look in the area around and make sure you learn about some of the other plants that are around so you're not damaging them because sometimes you may get lucky and you may find some other plants that are nearby that you can actually harvest and here's a prime example of that I raise up and I turn around you guys see all of that white all of that white that you see is mountain mint all of it that is a lot of mint so there's edible, so there's more edible and medicinal plants just right across the trail. One of the varieties of mint that are right across the trail is bee balm. And here you can see the white flowers of mountain mint. Right below that on the edge, right below that on the edge of that field we have black-eyed Susans. Another medicinal plant. And there's more of this mint. Like I said, all of this white that you see is mint. There might be a few things in there that's white flowered that isn't mint, but for the most part, almost all of that is mint. If I zoom in, you can really see the cone, whoops. 
If I zoom in, you can really see the cone flowers right over there, which is another medicinal plant. Those raspberries and blackberries and clovers and Queen Anne's lace was just right over there. Turn around on the other side of the trail, and this is what we have. All of those plants that I just showed you here. We come over here. We have poison ivy, which I'm not allergic to it, so don't freak out. But this is the notorious poison ivy with its distinct three set of leaves. Here we can see some yarrow flowers, which just barely passed its flowering stage at this point, but it's still perfectly usable. Yarrow you can use any time of the year that you find it growing, which is nice. You can see more of this poison ivy. Again, that is poison ivy. Leaves of three, leave them be. Here's another view of this field of mints. There's bee balms, there's mountain mints, there's echinaceas, there's black-eyed susans, there's green-headed coneflowers. There are all kinds of wildflowers throughout this field. It's usually just so beautiful, just like right now. It's beautiful, colored with its white. This is one of the nice things about mint, though, is because they're so prolific and they take over areas so much. And they're usually so large that you only need a couple for medicine or for food. So you don't have to worry about destroying a whole lot. You can see more black-eyed Susans here. You can see even more right there. Those raspberries and blackberries were just right over there. All those plants we've covered have been in just this very, very small area. I think we're past 15 different plants now. And mind you, I haven't even begun. To, and mind you, I haven't even began to talk about the trees or the shrubs. Like for example, right here we have staghorn sumac, or a variety of sumac to say the least. There you can see the sumac berry starting to form. There, oops, no, you can't. There you can see the sumac berry starting to form. So we also have some sumac in the area. We're going to go up here, and then there's going to be a trail that's going to come. This trail is going to come to a T, and we're going to hang a right. And at that right, we're going to enter a huge field of more wildflowers. So I'll show you that when I get there. Well, I didn't even get there, and I already spotted more plants right there. You can see a stinging nettle. There you may be able to see the dock or the rumex species growing back there. I don't know if that's broadleaf or curly dock. However, it is dock, and it is edible. There you can see quite a bit of echinacea or cone flower growing right there. There's a lot of that in this field along with bee balm and all kinds of other good stuff. Of course there's milkweed, just like in most clearings, there's always milkweed. This plant is amazing for bringing in monarch butterflies. It's because of the loss of this plant that we're losing our monarch butterflies in this part of, my, in this part of the country. Here you can see a hybridization between Echinacea and Arutabecchia species, producing this yellow coneflower, black-eyed coneflower. I don't really know what the name of this plant is. However, I do know it is a hybrid between Echinacea and black-eyed Susan, or Rutabecchia. I can tell that because of its distinct cone shape and its yellow flower petals. Here's milkweed pod. This is edible. We also have wild quinine in this area. We also have wild quinine in this area. The main reason for that is because where I'm at is more like a prairie habitat. I can tell it's wild quinine because of its very distinct white flowers and its very stiff, papery-like, lance-shaped leaves with its very sharp teeth. These le these leaves, as you might be able to hear, they actually sound quite a bit like paper. They feel a lot like paper too. They're very, very thick. You may also notice that the leaves alternate all up and down the stem. So those are the couple of ways that I can tell that this is wild quinine. Which this was an extremely important medicinal plant in the 18th and 19th centuries and still remains to be an important medicinal plant to this day. And lastly, I would like to apologize if this video is uploaded late. I actually had some internet problems for the past couple days. I was out of internet for almost, a, almost two full days. It really set me back on my work schedule, so I apologize for that, guys, but it was out of my control. I just wanted to let you guys know so you guys are aware, and hopefully it doesn't interrupt my upload schedule in the future. I'll try to work around it, but we'll see what happens. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a little bit of something. 
If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.